I paid a grand total of £340, which converts to around about $440 US dollars for six faulty Nintendo Switches. The aim is simple, to try and fix as many as I can and sell them on for a profit. Hopefully we can fix six out of six, but somehow, I just don't think that's gonna happen. Let's get into it. I'm gonna hook this little special device up to a Nintendo Switch official charger. Hopefully we're gonna be able to tell what the actual fault is by putting this into the Nintendo Switch. Or at least it will give us a good idea of what the fault is. Here we have Nintendo Switch number one. Let's see if it turns on. It does not. We get nothing on the screen. Side note, this one does look like it's been opened before because we can see it pried open here. Do we get anything on the amp meter when we put it into the Nintendo Switch? We got a flash and it turned off. Let's try again. Ah, oh, there we go, maybe it's just loose. So we get 0.10 amps, it's gone up to 0.15. 14.8 volts at the top. A normal reading should see us at about 0.4647. And then when the Nintendo Switch goes into fast charging mode, it can vary between 0.7 all the way up to an amp, I'm pretty sure. Let's flip it over and check it on the back as well. 0.11 amps, 0.15. So exactly the same on the front and the back. Let's get this one apart. We're gonna be using a mixture of two different screwdriver heads. We have a tri-wing head and we have a Phillips head to get into the Nintendo Switch. This is the metal shielding that helps with the cooling on the Nintendo Switch. We have a couple of marks here, I have no idea what they are. And I can also see some evidence of a strip screw, which definitely means that somebody has been inside this Switch. This is our first Nintendo Switch of the batch. And somebody, instead of putting the micro SD card holder on the outside where the metal shielding is, They've attached it underneath. My guy, how are you gonna put an SD card in if it's screwed under a metal shield? Also, this isn't the screw that you use to put this in. And it looks like they've also used toothpaste instead of thermal paste. Unfortunately, the shield is also bent up down here. Underneath here, I'm pretty sure we have two RAM chips. I'm hoping they haven't done any work to it, but the shield, look, as you can see, is coming off, so. I don't have good faith about this switch. I'm pretty sure this is the LED cable and it's not even plugged in. The right analog stick Ribbon cable is also not plugged in, and I'm pretty sure the digitizer isn't fully in either. So I'm just gonna sort some of these cables out. I've plugged the cables in that I think are necessary, jiggled them about a bit, and hopefully we see a different result. So I'm gonna turn this back. I'm just gonna hold it, actually. I don't wanna get toothpaste on my hands. If I put the uh, the cable in now, what do we get? We get not put... Oh, so we have a blue screen, do we? Okay. Pretty sure this means a CPU issue, which is very unfortunate, hence why I think the seller I bought this from has unplugged the cable that showed the screen because they didn't think that I'd find out actually that it was a blue screen. That would also explain why the shielding has come off at the bottom here because I think what they've tried is to reflow the APU and maybe the RAM chips. I've not actually come across a Nintendo Switch with a blue screen as of yet, so we're gonna put this one to the side and move on to Switch number two. Switch number two actually looks in okay condition, so I have high hopes. Does it turn on? Nope. What reading do we get with the ammeter? Okay, it actually comes on 0.08, 0.016, and just stays at 0.016. The other side, 0.10, 0.16. So we have the same on both sides, which is good. It means that it's not a charging port, I hope. Let's get it apart. At least this one has the micro SD slot in the right spot. This is what it's meant to look like. First looks on Nintendo Switch number two, and it looks like everything is okay. Everything looks factory, like the thermal paste is factory. We have no water damage. This down here is a water damage sticker. So when this goes from this polka dot red and white to a straight pink, that's when we have water damage. So that's that's fine. We have no corrosion whatsoever. Everything looks intact. Let's get the board out of this one, which is this big green part here and take it under the microscope to see if we can diagnose what's wrong. We've now switched over to the microscope camera and I've got my multimeter pros, which are these two things here. If they beat together like this, it means there's a complete circuit. I'm gonna test some things around the board and we're gonna see what's going on. First off, do we have continuity through this fuse? Yes, we do. Everything also seems fine over here. Move up to the M92T36 chip. We have a short ground on this side and this side. I'm pretty sure this capacitor here links up to P13 USB, which is on the back of the board. Let's test and see if we get a short ground on P13. Yes, we do. We have a short ground on P13 USB, which is this chip right here. I've just flipped the board over again to M92. There's a capacitor here, which is a CPU cap. Okay, fine. If there was a short ground on this side, chances are we've got a dead CPU, but that's fine. So straight off the bat, let's get rid of this chip and see if we still have a short on this capacitor. So the temperature I'm gonna go with is 450 degrees Celsius at an airflow speed of 50%. Let's 
Let's see if that short's still there or whether it's gone now on the cap. The short's still there. Okay, interesting. Let's take the cap off. Cap has been removed. Do we still have a short? Yes, we do. I'm now gonna remove the M92 chip and see if we still have that short. Has that short gone? It's still there. We still have the shorts. We got no P13, we got no M92 T36 on the other side of the board just here, and the short's still there. How strange. Do I have to remove this cap? Do we still have that short? Yes, we do, so I've removed everything for nothing. <laughs> I think we found the culprit and uh, I kind of overlooked this. So this is the charging port. And as you can see, we've got a couple of pins crossing over in certain areas. So this is most probably what's gonna be causing it. What I need to do is put everything back on that I've just taken off <laughs> and then change out the charging port. Right, let's get this port off. Now as you can see the port has been prepped but I do want to make sure that we've got rid of that short that was next to P13 USB. I've not put this chip back on yet just in case it was bad but I have put the capacitor back on. Let's just make sure that it's gone. Oh, it's still there. The short is still there even though there's no port on now. So I've put the M92 chip back on but I mean it looks it looks fine from all of the, the different angles and the chip's definitely on the right way. We still get a short this side then as well. I'm assuming we do. Yeah we do. It's still a short. So to triple check, I removed this capacitor, I removed the P13 USB chip, I removed this filter here, and then if we turn around, I also removed the M92 chip and this cap here. Lo and behold, we still have a short. Just confirm on this side as well. Oh, and the port was removed as well. So I have no idea what's causing this short on this board. I haven't been very lucky on these first two. Maybe it's a very, very simple thing that I'm missing, but we're gonna move on to switch number three once I've put everything back. Not much luck with the first two, but how are we looking with number three? If you're enjoying this type of video, by the way, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Also, if you do wanna to subscribe to see more videos like this, make sure you do. On to number three. Does it power on? Nope, nothing, okay. What do we get when we put the amp meter in? Tell us a story. 0.01 amp draw, okay. 15 volts we're getting though, which is strange. 0.01, I don't think I've ever seen 0.01. What about this side? 0.01, and this one's rare because we have the kickstand. Result, let's take a look further. I've just picked this one up and listen. Something's moving inside of this. That doesn't give me good hope. This looks like a different battery compared to the actual factory one. I wonder if this is what's rattling about. Is it even plugged in? No, it's not. So that's what was rattling. Let's plug the battery in, shall we? It's the wrong type of battery. It doesn't fit. This person's been sold down the river. It doesn't fit. Luckily, I've got one. I wonder if this is all this one needs. It'd actually be a nice bit of luck, I guess. Okay, here we go. Ready? I press the on button. We still get nothing. Okay, well, what happens when we put the ammeter in now? 0 0.34, 0 0.47, that's normal. 0 0.47 is normal, supposedly. But I don't get anything on the screen. 0 0.46, okay, that's a bit of a weird one. What I can confirm as well is that we don't get any backlight down here. So if I take it out and put it back in, we get no backlight. Usually, if this is uh, if this working as normal, what it should do, and say we had a screen issue, for example, the backlight would still turn on, but that's not happening. I've also just put this into my PC as well to see if it's in RCM mode, which I think is where people hack the switch, but it's not, so that's good. Let's have a look at number three, under the scope. I think I found an issue. This little cap looks like it was on its last legs completely. H 
hence why I think the battery wasn't working and somebody's tried to replace the battery but clearly there's a bigger issue at hand. This is the BQ chip and I'm pretty sure this is responsible for the charging of the switch. I'm just doing another quick inspection around just to make sure that we're all good. Let's check the charging port. Let's not make that mistake again. That looks fine. The back we have P13 looks absolutely fine. Let's clean up this area quick with some IPA and a toothbrush. Everything else seems absolutely fine by the way. No other issues on the board from what I can see. Everything checks out okay. If I wasn't too sure I wouldn't be cleaning this. I don't see how that stops the backlight from coming on though. So I will look to get this chip replaced and then look at the backlight stuff. Maybe it is causing the backlight. Question is, do we have a pad here? Right, let's heat up the iron and take off this little pad, shall we? That's if it wants to come off, which I don't think it is. So we've got a little bit of solder here, which is fine. We can use that with the cap. However, this one, I mean, there's nothing left of this one. I think it's pretty clear though that this trace here will go to this whole pad or we could just hook up to these. I'm gonna remove this BQ chip. I think we have enough there that it's gonna go on the chip, but we'll find out soon when I put the new chip on. This is the final job. There's two pads here that are joined together. They go to the same tray, so that's absolutely fine. If we listen to the continuity, we can hear it going there. That's no problem at all. This one should beep because it's ground. This one shouldn't, which is good. And lastly, we just want to check that there's continuity between here and under the chip. Yeah, yeah. So there's solder under here, and it shows that there's a good connection because it's beeping. So there's a continuous path from this probe to under the chip here. I've just checked around M92, everything seems fine there, and I've also checked P13 on the back, which is this one, and there's no shorts, everything looks fine here. As well as the filters, they all have continuous paths going from top to bottom, but not diagonal, so all good there. The only other thing I wanna check before we test is that we obviously didn't get anything on the screen. How's this connector looking? Connector looks fine, can I get it at a better, at a better angle? This is the backlight connector. Yeah, backlight connector looks like there's no issues whatsoever. So that's all good. Let's give it a test. Here we go, moment of truth. This is my battery that's in it now. Let's turn it around. Theoretically, we should get something on the screen. 0.33, 0.32, it's reset. It's just gone to 0.00. <laughs> oh no, why has it done that? That's not good. Let's try it again. 0.32, 0.48, okay. It's just gonna sit on 0.48 amps, so it's charging the battery. But again, nothing on the screen at all. No backlight, nothing. 0.33, 0.48, and as we can see here, we've got nothing on the backlight. This is not good for switch number three. I don't think I should give up my day job just yet. Maybe we'll come back to this one. Moving on to Nintendo Switch number four. We've not been so lucky on the previous three, but I have no doubt that that is down to my knowledge on trying to repair Nintendo Switches. Maybe one or two unlucky. Hopefully that changes with this one. What happens when we try and turn on Nintendo Switch number four? Ooh, I don't know if you guys can see, there is a backlight. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that, but it has come on, but there's no image. Maybe this angle, no, this angle, no. So the backlight seems to be working, but maybe there's something wrong with the LCD. Let's take it apart. I've actually just noticed that the LCD ribbon connector, which is down here on the left, was a tiny bit loose, and so was the backlight. So I've given them a bit of clean with IPA, and I'm now just gonna try and turn it on and see if that has made any difference. It'd be really good if we could get a quick win here. Now I'm not even getting a backlight. What, what do we get if we try and charge it? 0 0.31, 0 0.77 at 15 volts, 0.78. So this is fast charging. This is really, really good, but I'm not getting anything on the screen now. I was getting a backlight a second ago. I'm not getting that anymore. All I've done was given it a clean with some IPA and reseated the ribbon cables. Let's take a closer look. Firstly, we'll have a little inspection of the ribbon cables. We don't need to look at this one. This is the LCD ribbon connector. And that is looking fine, in my opinion. No tears or anything along the actual ribbon connector. And then if we look at the backlight ribbon cable, which is this one, how's this looking? Again, little bits of dirt on the middle 
pins. I don't think we're going to be able to wipe that off, whatever it is. I just want to make sure that we get continuity from this area here down to this area, which we do. So this little bit of dirt here isn't stopping that connection. So the actual ribbon cables look fine. Now this has been taken apart before. I know that because the Velcro on the fan has been ripped and there were some screws missing as well. So I definitely know that somebody's been in this before. This is the backlight connector here. Seems absolutely fine, albeit a little bit of gunk. It all looks okay, look, all the pins are there. Let's give it a decent clean with some IPA and a toothbrush, again. It makes no sense, I can't see anything wrong with this connector. It seems to be absolutely fine. A good way to kind of just make sure and triple test is to put my meter in continuity mode and just check that each one of these pins are connected to the uh, board. Which they are. There's nothing wrong there. Let's also just check the actual LCD connector itself on the inside, how we look in. Fine. Like, no, <laughs> no issues whatsoever from what I can see. Maybe, no, just no loose pins, nothing. Get a bit more of a close-up, but... Nothing that I can see here is worrying. How strange is this? I've also just tested my device in RCM mode on the PC and it's not in RCM mode. This is another random bit of housing that I've got and this is the board that just wasn't working. I've tested it again in the original housing and it's not having any of it. So what I've decided to do is test it in this frame that I've got here, which as far as I recall is working fine. This had a dead motherboard so I took that out and I've, uh, I've kept the case you see. So I'm hoping that will then let us know whether it's the board or the old housing. So let's put this in this housing. All right, so everything's in the new housing now. I've got the battery connected, the LCD ribbon connector and the backlight as well. Let's see what happens when we plug it in. Do we get anything on the screen? No, we don't. And it goes 0.07 amps, 0.10 amps. I wonder if that's because the battery is dead though, because I haven't tested this battery. Let me grab my full battery. That's plugged in. What happens now? Do we get anything? Please give us the win. Plugged in, 0.31, 0.47. We don't get the Nintendo charging symbol up here. <clears throat> this is just restarted, which means rebooted, which is good, it's a good thing. But again, the backlight is on. I can see the backlight on on the screen, but we have no display, which means that there's something wrong with the board, basically. If I turn this over, you should be able to see the backlight. See where my fist is? And you've got the backlight. There we go, down there. See how it's on, but there's nothing on the screen? Sucks. I don't want to replace the LCD ribbon connector on this board because it looks fine. There looks to be no issues with it whatsoever. I don't know if there's a little driver next to it perhaps that's causing it not to display. I'm gonna to have to investigate this one more. So that's also a fail for Nintendo Switch number four. This is not looking good. Nintendo Switch number five. Now I'm pretty sure I know what's wrong with this one. We try and turn it on. We have a cracked screen. That's fine. The body that I just used for the other one, I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna take the motherboard and components out of this one and put it into that one and see if it works. Right, it's all swapped over. The battery's dead on this one, remember, so I'm having to use this battery for the time being until I can charge this one up. Now, do we get anything on the screen? Please, let's go. Yes, okay, this is good. I haven't seen that sign for a very long time. Get in. Okay, that's also really, really good. Console battery low, sweet. It turns on, there's no parental controls, which is wicked. I just need to test a few things out first. I'm not getting my hopes up just yet. I finally have really good news. This Nintendo Switch works absolutely fine. Both the Joy-Con rails were connected to Wi-Fi. Oh, look at the time actually, 13.37. Those who know, know. I've connected to Wi-Fi, it, it's charging. I've put a game in, the game shows up. Perfect. When it's in charge, it's charging the Joy-Cons and the Switch itself, which is also really good news. I can confirm, I can't believe it's the first time I've said it this video, Nintendo Switch number five is up and running. That's one out of five so far. We have to get the last one as well. The only thing left for me to do is transfer the serial number on the actual case, but I'll do that off camera. Let's move on to Nintendo Switch number six. Here we have switch number six, and you might be thinking, oh, Joey, it powers on, like, what do you mean? It powers on, but it doesn't work in a docking station. This one is pristine. It even has a screen protector on still. This one on its own, I actually managed to get for 60 pounds. If I can fix this, it will go for around about 110 pounds. Let me show you the fault. This was switch number five, and I'm just showing you that it definitely works on the dock. So when I take it out and put it back in, you can see that switch number five works on the dock, so that's all good. If I, however, take switch number six, which as you can see is on, and I put it in the dock, it goes off, however, I get nothing on the screen. So it's not working in the docking station. Usually in these circumstances, it's the filters near the P13 USB chip, but we're gonna take apart this Nintendo Switch now and have a quick look. 
Oh my goodness, this is the P13 chip that I was talking about and it has a hole in it and I'm pretty sure this trace has probably come off as well. So what we're gonna do is remove the chip ever so carefully and see what's going on. Originally I thought this filter would have been blown but I mean, it's yeah, it's fairly evident that the chip is gone. We're gonna go 450 degrees Celsius, airflow speed of 50%. So we just yeet that out of the way. You can see that the pad here is gone completely. I'm gonna clean this up quickly before I keep scraping because I don't wanna scrape anything and damage it further. By the looks of it, yeah, that's gone, isn't it? I'm gonna have to get this off, scrape it off. I'm gonna see if I can use that. I need to run a jumper wire from, I'm gonna try and do it from here to here and that way when I solder the new chip on, it should work. I'm gonna just test continuity from this point to here to make sure there's no breaks in the line. Multimeter again in continuity mode. Let's put one of the probes here, one of the probes here and one up here. There we go, that's fine. So we know that that's an active connection. So I can now put a wire here, solder it to here, put a new chip on, we should be good to go. Whilst I'm here, I'm gonna check the filter. So we're gonna go here to here. That's fine, here to here. It doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like a connection here to here. Yeah, I think there's something definitely wrong with this filter as well, so I'll change that out. Let's sort the filter out first. Let's test with a multimeter now. So I've got it here. That's fine. What about this one up here? That's all good. Perfect. Back, front to back, no side to side, no side to side. Good. Now let's focus on P13 USB. Firstly, we're going to add a tiny bit of flux here, a tiny bit of solder on the iron. Just put it here, perfect. I'm gonna take this tiny bit of wire and tack it down. A bit more solder, tiny bit more flux. Tell you what, our best bet, I'm gonna actually go from here. Now we're just cleaning up some IPA and be careful, we're gonna stroke it downwards. That looks okay though so far. Make it a little bit hotter just so it's easier. And here we have our wire. Pretty nice job I think, that'll do nicely. The only thing we're gonna do now is just lay down some conformal coating. Now I basically get a UV light, I cure this and it just keeps everything in place nice and steady. Now after it's been cured, we go to poke. Nice and solid, there we go, perfect. I'm just gonna test once more for continuity to make sure that this pin goes here, perfect, and up here, perfect. Now let's get the chip on. Just gonna put some flux on here and make sure that I've got enough solder, make sure I've got enough solder on this little jumper wire. Plenty. I'm not gonna replace this solder, it's gonna be absolutely fine anyway. Put some flux on, spread it around. Let's put the chip on. Get rid of this little bubble. There we go. Give everything a decent clean. Here we have the final product. Now let's just check that everything on P13 is joined up. That looks fine. That looks okay in line. This also looks okay in line. Just a real quick continuity test to make sure that everything's going where it should be. Is this going to here? Yes it is. Wicked. That's not going anywhere. That's there. Perfect. Let's give it a test. I haven't put it back together fully yet, but I don't think I need to in order to test. Obviously, the touchscreen's not on, but that won't matter if we put it in the dock and it works. So let's give this a test. Moment of truth, does it work? Switch in. Does it turn off? It does. Do we get anything on the display? Come on. No. The switch is definitely off though, but we get nothing on display. Hmm, okay, interesting. I did just quickly think it might be worth checking the charging port on this as well, just in case this is what actually caused the issue in the first place, but seems to look okay from what I'm looking at. There is a tad bit of gold I can see back here, but the actual pin itself seems to be there as well. So I don't think that's an issue. I don't think that's shorting out with anything. Yeah, I don't think that's an issue. I'm looking at the board again and it looks fine. Doesn't seem to be any issues. However, when I put the black probe on ground, I seem to get ground, which it doesn't happen to any other filter. So I don't know why that is. And it's not this side, it's just this side. But there is also a continuous path. I'm gonna reflow the chip. I 
I still have a short. Neither pin next to it is grounded. So I don't know where it's getting its ground from. I'm gonna remove this filter. I still get a short to ground here, but I don't get one up here. So I think the filter's good. I'm gonna remove everything and see if I actually have a short to ground here. Let's check and see if it's still shorted to ground now. It is. And not one other pin is ground, except for this one. So I think there's a little bit of exposed copper underneath this trace here, where the little explosion happened, and it's dug out an internal short from the board. That's then causing this to short. Hello, post-editing Joey here. I realized I didn't actually give a good enough description of what I had done. After removing the trace wire that I put in myself, I found that there was indeed a short on the board. On the pin that the explosion happened, it must have dug a little bit deeper to expose some copper that created a short to ground. I removed the conformal coating that was there already, the green stuff that's on the board. I put some conformal coating underneath the jumper wire. This way it would stop the short to ground connecting to the jumper wire. I then put the jumper wire back, put the chip on, and here we are. I don't know how much I recorded previously because I kind of got lost in the moment a little bit. However, under here was a short on the board itself, which was causing this to be shorted to ground. And now this isn't shorted to ground, which is a result. Let's put it back together and test. Moment of truth, it's on, putting it in, screen blank. Goes in, nice. Anything? <laughs> yes, come on, let's go, man. Sweet, wicked. Really thought for a second it wasn't turning on. And just to confirm, this is all good. It works on the dock. That is Nintendo Switch number six, fixed and ready to sell. Just to summarize, I have two Nintendo Switches that are working and it is these two on the end here. I'll probably be able to get about 120 pounds each for both of these, that's 240 pounds for these Nintendo Switches. If I was gonna scrap these four, I think I'd be able to get around about 40 pounds for each of them, just for spares and parts. So 40, 80, 120, 160. Altogether, we're looking at an approximate value of 400 pounds, which roughly equates to $520, meaning, I've still made a profit, even though I was only able to fix two. I will most probably be doing a live stream tomorrow, the 20th of March, which is a Sunday. If you're watching this video in the past, it will be in my unlisted live stream playlist. Hopefully we can fix a couple more. If not, no dramas. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.